Hello, this is Angela Anderson. Thanks for joining me for this acrylic painting tutorial. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to paint a really simple scene uh, of an Amsterdam canal with some red tulips in the front. I'm going to simplify this image quite a lot. We're going to kind of have it as part of our series that we've done before with Paris and London. So this is kind of number three in our black and white with a pop of red series. Oh, I've got my husband Mark with me. Hey there, everybody. He's going to chat during our live show today. So if you've got questions while I'm painting, you can ask those and I'll try to answer them. Let's get started. Alrighty, so I'm using a 9 by 12 inch panel. This is a canvas board from Fredericks. It's a Linens Pro Series, 100% linen. It's got a nice hard core, so I really like these. Um, boards. I have covered this with uh, what is the color? Paint. Gray. I covered it with paint. Is that your guess? Yes. <laughs> My final answer. N7. <laughs> N7 neutral gray. So if you don't have that color, just you know, mix a gray, black and white. It's it's not that uh, difficult. This one's got a little bit more of a brownish tone, so you could add a little bit of burnt umber or something like that if you wanted it a little warmer gray. But I kind of wanted to start with a mid-tone, um, and then we'll be adding our light and darks on top of it. Um, and I've already sketched out my design on here. Um, I'll talk a little bit about the design drawing, but I'm not going to go into a whole lot of detail with it because it's super complicated. Um, it, but it, I don't think it's going to be difficult to draw or paint. Uh, hopefully, because um, we're going to keep we're going to keep it really simple. We're just going to do kind of some lines this way and some little dots and things, and that's going to be it. Like we're going to really really simplify it. Um, uh, let's go over our brushes, and I grabbed pretty much all of my brushes. <laughs> grabbed a bunch of different sizes so um, I wasn't really sure what I was going to need so these are some different sizes of flats these are all Princeton brushes the black handles are the Aspen series the green handles are the 6100 Summit series and uh, these are Umbria and these are Velvet Touch all from Princeton um, so I've got different the the shorter handles come in short in smaller sizes and then the larger uh, longer handles come in this is the smallest size that they have um in the 6100 series summit series so um i've got the well, i guess i'll go over the num sizes uh 486 or 468 uh number two and then a six and two in the half inch quarter inch in the umbria and then the six chisel and four chisel blenders in the uh, Velvet Touch. Now, that, like I said, I'm probably not going to use all of those, but I just grabbed them just so that I have um, sizes in case when I'm getting to work. Like, you know, if I'm working fast, I want to grab a different size to fit in these little, you know, each, each little section is going to be a little bit different. I also grabbed some angle brushes. So I've got a large angle here, the six in the Aspen, and then a three-eighths inch and quarter inch angle. Uh, and then I've got a bunch of rounds too. <laughs> like I said, I grabbed pretty much all my brushes here, a lot of them. Um, you like I, you are not going to need all these, but um, I I haven't painted this yet, so I really don't know what I'm going to need. So we'll see as we go along. I've got a zero, two, four, six in the rounds. This one is a two aught and a two. Um, the difference between the um, the ones with the white here, so the um, as far as firmness goes, these ones are going to be the firmest uh, brushes. So these are the Aspen series. They've got a little bit more coarse texture to them, so they're going to leave a little bit more um, texture in your paints. A little bit, you'll see the lines. It'll be a little bit more painterly. Um, and then um, these will be a little bit smoother in the um, the summit. Probably the next firmest size would be, or firmest brush would be the Umbria. They're a little bit. Uh, they feel there, but they're super soft. So there's they're soft, but they're they're kind of firm And then these ones are also kind of pretty equal to that that 6100 series They're they're soft and um, firm and Then the velvet touch are are going to be the softest of all of them. They're going to kind of bend a little bit more but um, They're also really good and they and they all of the softer brushes will leave you less brush strokes so um, the coarser brushes like this one will leave more of the brush stroke showing and that's just I mean the you know the kind of thicker paint and stuff it'll 
leave that marks um, which we're gonna we're gonna want with this one so that's why I grabbed so many of the Aspen because I figured um, we're gonna want kind of more of that uh, thicker brush stroke textures happening but I don't have a lot of sizes in that so I kind of filled it in with the other brushes that I have all right long story quarter inch and three eighths inch blenders also for the trees so you're just gonna need a small stippler for some of your trees okay and then you're gonna want a watercolor pencil or you can draw it on paper and then trace it and transfer it on using graphite paper, but I would use a, a graphite that is water soluble. So like this one is, you can see it, it'll erase if you wipe it with water. So any of the pencils, you could use chalk too. Really the only lines you're gonna need are these kind of main outlines and then a few lines coming down this way. Um, your little, cars and things are going to be pretty much like little dots and lines it's, they're not super defined same thing with the boats and then the the um tulips and the, i wanted to say daisies that's wrong um all right let's go over our colors we've got carbon black burnt umber yellow uh, cadmium yellow medium cadmium red light and medium ultramarine blue <clears throat> this is my voice and uh ti unbleached titanium and titanium white so that's all of our colors there, and um, you could probably use um, some zinc white too if you wanted to. I'm going to grab a little bit of glazing medium just to help the color flow on there a little easier. And you're going to want to spray, keep your water, um, your paints wet there. So um, <clears throat> with this kind of painting, it's really easy to do. Um, it's got a pretty simple vanishing point right back here. I'm gonna write about where that bridge is gonna be back here. So that is about, um, let's say just above the halfway mark and just slightly off center. It doesn't honestly matter where you start it just as long as you keep all of your lines going to that point once you, once you pick a vanishing point. Um, so you're gonna pick that and then all of these lines of the canal here are going to come off and off the edge and as you move it up, you're just gonna pivot your line so you can see kind of the tops of the cars are gonna be there. Um, then some of the details on some of these buildings, like all of these window ledges, if you wanna make sure that you don't go down like I'm doing there, all these window ledges are going to line up with it. So you can kind of make a few reference marks so that when you're um, doing your windows, you kind of know where they're uh, the top of them is going to be the angle because the, the tendency is going to be want to want to go uh, across all the same size but they're actually going to get smaller as they go down and even in the same building these are going to diminish in size as they come down this way um, towards the vanishing point and then our rooftops are also going to line up you can see um, the fronts of these rooftops are all lining up with our vanishing point um, this one's going right up off the edge there. And then the same thing on this side. You're just going to have all these kind of lines coming through and they'll all match up to that. Then we can do our little canal going across and then another line kind of below it. And then there's a little bit of the shoreline kind of showing through. And then we've got our posts coming down through it on either side. And these it, it just kind of comes down to the side points here and here where the street um, lines up. So there's a line here and then all the way down the canal there's all these lines that are pointing right straight back to that spot there. And then we're going to have some boats in the water all through here but um, we'll just draw, we'll paint those in as we go. So our tulips in the front are basically that kind of cupped shape so um, <clears throat> we're going to have different um, petals that are kind of overlapping each other. And they're all going to kind of make that bowl shape. Tulips are really fun to paint. They're, they're, not, they're not really particularly difficult for, so they're a great beginner flower. <clears throat> So kind of like that. Oh, I need to do this side here. So this is a prime example of a scene 
that has absolutely nothing to do with flowers. Mm-hmm. And then we just put flowers on it. Right. Well, yeah, you got to, you, why, why not, right? <laughs> Tulips are, are, you know, a, I, w- I would say that, that they fit, they fit. It looks like they're watching a movie. What? The flowers. It looks like, like Mystery Science 3000. Right. <laughs> well, it's going to go up there. start with my larger brush. I'm going to get the largest flat eight bright here. I'm just going to work on the sky here. So I'm going to get some of the white and I'm just going to lay that in and maybe add a little bit of the little bit of the gray. That's so not like pure white, but it's pretty bright. It's one of the brighter areas on the canvas. So we're just going to kind of lay that in there. And go right up to the edge of our roof line. Just trying to smooth it out. very noisy. We got Mark a new chair last year. Was it last year or the year before? I don't know. It's not that old. Has it been a while? About a year and a half-ish. It's true because it was before we did the remodel. Mm -hmm. Might be two years. I lose track of time. I may do too. I do too. Sad. Okay, and so I forgot to mention the the so the fronts of the building are going to be like this, but the the parts that are facing us are going to be horizontal. So there's going to be kind of both a little bit of both going on here. I'm just going to go like that. You can see how much paint is in my brush. I haven't I haven't added any more paint since I kind of started doing this part. So goes a little bit goes a long way here and we're not wanting it to be super smooth anyways we're kind of wanting to have a little bit of a little bit of this texture and things happening in it because this will kind of match up the rest of our of our painting too okay and I might go a little bit lighter right along that um, horizon line down there if you do that, it's kind of a tricks the eye into thinking it's farther away. So you go a little bit lighter right at the horizon line, at the very farthest point from us. And then just kind of smooth it out. If your paint's starting to get sticky up there, what you can do is just let it dry completely and then do this over again. Don't try to blend it in if it's starting to kind of get gummy. Like if you start to see um, the paint clump together and stuff or stick to your brush, it's you want to stop and just let it dry before you keep painting. Okay, so let's use this color in the water too. So we're just going to go down here. I'm going to turn my brush a little bit to the side and I'm going to start way back there, right underneath the bridge, way back in the distance. And I'm going to hold my brush an angle like this and I'm just going to slide it almost flat against the canvas. You see how low I'm holding it? I'm holding it way back here. I'm just going to scrape it side to side and we want to get these kind of texture things happening. What was your background color again? Kind of in the middle here. What? What was your 
background color again? It was N7 gray, neutral gray. So it's just kind of a medium gray. Doesn't really matter. Most of it's going to cover, be covered. So we're only going to like see through a little bit of it, but it shouldn't be too dark. Didn't go up too dark. So I'm just scraping it on so that I can get. And I'm going to go right up over my tulips because we're going to, we don't want to have to paint this around them. Get a little bit more paint. And like I said, I mean, I started way up here with just a little bit of paint on my brush. So I'm not using a whole lot of paint. I'm really just kind of scraping it on. And this brush, these kind of more textured brushes will give you a better effect for doing this. You don't want to kind of, you don't want to abuse your softer brushes because they, you can kind of break the, break the bristles. You don't want to do that. So use a brush that's kind of an older brush maybe, or one that's got a little bit of a texture in it. Um, like a hog bristle might work or something like that. Hog bristles are those white bristled brushes that are real cheap. Okay, so there we go. That's what we're gonna do there. Now let's get a little bit more black. And I'm gonna use that, a bit more water. And I'm gonna darken up along the canal line. So I'm gonna go right up next to the boat and I'm just using that edge of my brush to darken up the line of that canal. Let me see, where is that gonna go? Right, yeah, right in there somewhere. And then I'm going to pull that down and go around my boats and then make sure that I'm keeping it kind of horizontal here and do my dark. Now this is going to be a lot more noticeable because it's going over the, it's white. So I can, every now and then I can pick up some of that lighter color and kind of make a medium gray out of it. I'm going right over my tulips. I'm not going to worry about them at all. I'll draw those back in later. Then I'm going about to this one here. Maybe not quite that far. Maybe around, right around this one. So about halfway from here to here. That's kind of where this dark is coming down in the water here. Be sure that you're leaving these, these open areas here of the canvas showing through. You want that kind of scumbled um, look here. We're dry brushing it kind of so that we're getting lots of texture happening. And then as I get closer to the boats here, I'm just going to be a little bit more careful. I'm going to come up close to them with this dark. Comes a little bit closer and then this part comes out again. This is about all we're going to do with the water. We're not going to go super detailed with it. This will give us a really interesting effect without having to do a whole lot of work. That's my motto. Interesting without a lot of work. Exactly. <laughs> I'm going to go back in with my lighter color here and just going to scrub back in. Kind of a medium gray. It's not as super dark uh, everywhere. So, and if you need to, this is where you could grab your smaller brushes because this one is kind of big for this. But I, I like to use the biggest brush that'll fit in the area. So this one's kind of like right on the borderline. So it's almost too big, but it'll cover a big area, and that's why I'm using it because because it'll make this go a lot faster if you use a bigger brush. Okay, so now I'm just kind of going back over with a little bit more water on my brush and um, adding kind of a medium gray tone. I've got a little bit more of the white in my brush here and just kind of softening up some of those areas and adding some of the, in fact, this is coming way out too far here. I don't know why I brought it way out here because it's going to follow the line kind of of that vanishing point too. So your shadows are going to do the same thing as your as here, they're gonna kind of come up this way here. So, so this is where I need to stop the highlights right there. I just went out too far, got a little happy with it, and forgot where I was supposed to end it. 
So right in there somewhere. And we can just, like I said, we're just using that lighter color to kind of push back that black a little bit. Right there. And I'm gonna kind of add a little bit of that medium gray. Let's do the same thing on this side. So this side, our line's gonna go right about like that, right? Somewhere in there. So right in like that. It's gonna go off the edge right here. And that's about as far out as it's gonna go. dark. Go right up next. Now this slide has got a lot more boats, so I'm just going to kind of dab in and around, and we'll put the boats in later. And again, keep your brush kind of horizontal here when I'm putting this side. This probably needs to be a smaller brush. These, this side is not as shadowed, so that tells me the light's coming from this side. This side's getting more light. This side's got more of that shadow hitting the water. Okay, so the shadows are much shallower on this side. You're really only seeing what's just below these boats. So hello everybody. Hi guys. Welcome to the show. Yep. Welcome. What? Hope you're doing well. Yeah. Hope you're doing well. I'm doing all right. How you doing? I'm doing all right. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> doing all right. Getting that black hair right here. Really dark line right there. Yep, doing all right. Glad to be painting today. It's always a good day when we get to paint. <laughs> All right, so there we go. Already got some kind of depth going just by having that sh like that. Um, you know, this shadow goes all the way across that water. You keep that a little bit smaller. I'm going to go back in here now with some white and just kind of highlight sort of the middle area here. Add a little bit of highlight. I'm, I'm exaggerating what I'm seeing in the picture, so this is not as bright as this. But this will kind of emphasize that also, that depth, and just give us a little something extra there. There we go. Clean that out. And then I'm going to switch to my little brush here. I'm going to get this dark gray here. So kind of that darker middle tone gray. Uh, maybe a little bit lighter than that. The colors are going to dry darker too, so just keep that in mind when you're putting these on. If you're using heavy body acrylics, they will. Regular acrylics, maybe not so much, like craft acrylics. Which this one's you can use pretty much. It won't matter if you're using cheaper paints with this one. So I'm gonna tap in some little texture. And mostly I'm just concerned about the texture along that top area back there, but there's just all these little trees back here that are kind of taking up residence. And then there's a few little buildings also kind of tucked back in there. So there's, I'm going to get some of this black and just kind of put a little bit of that. And it's not actually that dark. Um, one thing that we can do on this is that um, you'll notice in uh, landscapes and, and everything, like one of the things that we can do, just like we did the, um, the white along the horizon line here, if we use very similar values, back here, so kind of uh, lighter colors and closer in value. Um, so I'm talking values in, in the dark and light. Let me see if I can find my, I don't know where it is. Um, 
never mind, I was going to look for my value scale, but basically if you, if you made a, you know, a, a line between your white, your white, whitest white and, um, you know, kind of medium gray and just kind of went through and darken it up a little bit as you go, by the time you get to black, you're going to have kind of this, um, scale of, of differing values, right? And you can do this as much, you know, as much as you want. So you can have, you know, kind of all these different kind of middle values in here before you get to this really dark area here. So if you looked at this, our, our areas back here, we're going to kind of stick to one or two values that are very close together in back here. And then as we go um, closer to this side, we're going to start using both of these. We're going to start using all of these other colors and really start expanding and using these darker, darker blacks and whiter whites on these buildings that are closer to us. That also will push that perspective back. So these ones back in here, we're going to use this kind of middle, middle gray here. Uh, in fact, I probably ought to. Let's just go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and what what's up? Oh, okay. Mark has his headphones on. He's looking at me. I don't know that is. Oh, you weren't? Okay. Uh, not right there. Okay. <laughs> it was a neighbor's vacuum. It's with that high pitch. Ah. Okay. So I made a darker gray right there with a little bit of the brown and blue. And that's just to kind of have another tone to throw in here so that it's not so cold black and white. Um, so we'll, I'm going to have this over here to just kind of dip into. It's the kitty litter thing you're hearing in the other room, isn't oh. it? Is that what it is? I think it's the kitty litter. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. We bought one of those robo kitty litter things. Best investment ever. Oh my gosh, I don't know how we lived with that one for so many years. It's so awesome. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to start out with... really need to start with the light color and add the black because the light is harder to control. So I'm going to grab, scoop up a bunch of white here. And then take a decent amount of it and add just a little bit of black. And I mean a little bit of black. I'm using a palette knife just to make it easier to mix. So let me go ahead and grab, scrape up some of that black that's right there. And really, I don't know why I left that white there because we're not going to, we can dip into that white if we need white. Okay, so we've got a, a lot of that color. So what I'm going to do is kind of scrape it all up into a little section. The smaller the area that you have of your mixes, the longer they you'll have to let them dry before you have they dry out. So they'll stay wet longer. That's what I'm trying to say. I don't know what I was saying there. The longer they, you'll have to let them dry. Okay. They'll stay wet longer. Same thing. Okay. So just try and kind of keep that organized right there. So I mix, I grabbed about, I don't know, three quarters of it, something like that. Maybe a third. I'm going to grab some of this black. So I'm going to grab a little bit more black this time. Mix that in. I don't want to do too many colors. So I'm going to kind of. Do maybe four different colors in this string. So this will give us a little bit darker color and each time we get closer to the black we'll go a little bit more black with it. I like using a flexible palette knife like the one I've got here because it, it, I can get that paint off of it a little bit easier. It's getting kind of stuck up there. Okay. 
think we'll take about half of it. And this time I'm going to take a pretty good amount of black here. Mix that together. So each time I get closer to the black, I'm going to use a little bit more black and a little bit less of the white mixture. Okay, this will be a good kind of medium value color there. And then I'm going to just grab a little bit of white here. Grab a decent amount of that black. So we do this ahead of time. We can just dip into these colors and we don't have to mix them each time we, you know, do a gray. We'll just have these colors kind of pre-ready to go. Pre-ready pre to go. And then get a little bit of white here. And do this side with just a little bit of white at it. Can see why we didn't start with the black because it you you need a lot of this white to even affect it at all. Doesn't take much of the black to affect the white, but the darker colors you need a whole lot more white to change them. So you always start with the color that's easiest to change when you're mixing. All right, so we got quite a bit of this darker gray here and go into the lighter. So are we now considered post ready to go? <laughs> Why? Well, when does a pre-ready to go phase end? <laughs> Is that what I said? Yes. Oh. Yeah. I don't know. I'm not you're, responsible you, for what I say when I'm painting. You're just happy over there mixing paint. <laughs> Saying words. <laughs> Saying words. <laughs> words, 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 blah, blah, blah. Paint. Blah, blah, paint. <laughs> yeah. So that, that, that's. All right. So, and now my paint is dry in this brush. That's okay. That's okay. These brushes, you can, they can take a lot of abuse, these blenders. In fact, I like them better when they start getting abused because they start to fuzz out a little bit. Um, normally on a brush, you don't want that, but on your blenders, you're, you kind of do. So, all right. So again, we're using this kind of middle value back in here, right? Um, so I'm going to kind of use the middle to lighter values here and just kind of throw some of the highlights in the trees. And I've got that little building right there, so I'm going to put a kind of a tree in front of it, a little tiny bit there, and then down in the area. This is where we're going to use our little round brushes. I'm going to get kind of this darker, darker gray and go right here for the bridge. Again, keep it kind of loose, so I'm not trying to get it super detailed. I'm, I'm kind of sketching with my brush here. And I'm going to go ahead and throw in a couple little lines for my tree trunks too while I'm at it. Can you see that? Okay. Mark's zoomed in good. All right. Then I'm going to use the same gray kind of back in here. Kind of just some of this kind of medium to light gray back in here to fill in. And then the front of the the front of the bridge has some little highlights on this side. There, 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 and then a little bit maybe on the top. I don't know. And if you can't tell it's a bridge, just add you know add a little bit darker again until you kind of see. Okay, that's got a little arch right there. There you go. Okay. Like that, and then I need to make sure that this is straight here. But that's all I'm going to do right there. I'm not going to go super a lot of detail. Um, I'm going to get the lighter color here. I'm going to make sure my white is in my water back here past the bridge. And then there's a little shadow in the water right up underneath it. So we'll go a little bit of a line 
like right across from where these posts are. And then there's a little bit of a light color right behind it um, back here to show their depth. There's depth kind of going past the bridge deck back in there. Okay, just like that. So let's go ahead and use this little round brush. I'm just going to use it with a kind of uh, second gray, second to lightest gray here. And I'm going to go along this concrete that's facing the light right here. In fact, it might go a little bit lighter, especially as we get closer to us right here. And you could use a, you could use your flat brush for this too. Like I could uh, maybe use this brush here, the two quarter inch bright. Use it and just as I press down harder, the lines are going to get thicker. But I'm using it on its edge here, so um, and then as I get farther away, I'm just barely touching the edge of the brush. Let's do it over here. You can see what I'm talking about. As it get down here, I'm just going to press a little bit harder. Maybe do go over my line a couple times just to get a little bit thicker. Okay. This side is going to be darker though, so I need to go a little bit darker. I'm going to go back, um, back here and I'm going to pull down now. I'm going to pull down this canal that's facing us, right? And I'm going around my, bar bo my boats here. Going down to the water. It should be close to the water darkness, but not quite as dark. Right? And then as we get closer here, we can use a little bit of the darker colors, especially right up in there, and then lighten them up just as they touch the water line. And these again. Making sure we're kind of keeping them straight up and down here. And I'm going to go ahead and darken up this too just a little bit. Too, I can go back in with my white or my lighter color and I'm just going to kind of lightly brush through some highlights in a couple places. And as I get farther away, it's not going to be as noticeable, but like right kind of right in here. A little bit of a streaks in that concrete barrier there. Just go back through with my dark and make sure I've got a shadow underneath that lip that's sticking out right there. Okay, so this side I'm going to go with the lighter colors, do the same thing. Go ahead and leave some of that darker or some of the colors showing through from the background there if you want to. This side's mostly boats, so but you are seeing a little bit of this concrete barrier in between them. And if you wanted to you could just do the concrete barrier first and then trace on your boats over the top. So you can trace multiple times. So if you ever cover over your tracing, you can always go back in and add it again later. Like you could trace just your main lines first and then, you know, like your, like your um, skyline and maybe a few separations in the buildings and then your main separations here in the canal and then paint that in and then trace in all of your little details over the top of that. So once you get your first layer in, we're working on three brushes here at a time so far, so we're getting serious. <laughs> tend to do that when I get going. <laughs> Mark teases me. I'm surprised you hadn't said anything yet. 
We waiting waiting for your opportune moment. Well, I was going to ask you, how do you know how many brushes to hold in your other <laughs> hand? I mean, does does that just come with experience, or? <laughs> use a whole lot of this unbleached titanium. I was going to use a little bit of it um, here and there, you know, just to kind of warm up the warm up the whites. So we can do that. In this area here, there's more of the lighter color, so I'm going back over that dark with some of the lighter just to add a little Lights. And I'm using this brush here, the quarter inch, it's got texture, it's going to give me a little texture. And then this, I'm seeing these little lines through, in fact I might hold it this way, and do little ripples that are reflections coming down. And we'll get the darker color and do the same thing with the darker. Make sure I'm kind of coming straight down towards me. Do that. I'm making sure that I'm keeping that same texture that I've got in the water though. I don't want like super smooth lines coming through this textured area. So I'm going to kind of, kind of muss it up a little bit so that it kind of fits and mixes with the rest of it. There we go. This side we got a little bit of it, um, so there's like a little bit of it in here. Coming down from that boat, there's a little bit of it in here. We're kind of already sort of have the, some of these reflections happening. going to kind of work my way back up to the buildings here. Um, I think I'm going to use the angle brush here, the quarter inch angle, because I can do dots and kind of straight lines with it. So I'm going to get this gray here, this dark gray that I mixed with the burnt umber and ultramarine blue. And let's use that for some of these boats in here. I'm just going to do little, literally do little dabs along the waterline way back here. So there's not any any kind of detail at all. Just little dabs. And they just have to be dark enough to be able to kind of tell there's something there. And I'm gonna get the lighter color and kind of do some highlights on top. Just like that. See? Just little... Nothing. Nothing there. Nothing there. Just little dash, dashes and dots. The So the boat shape's going to be like this uh, kind of a V-shape going away from you, you. Like that. So kind of this V-shape going away in the water. And then make sure we've got some dark color in the actual water. For it to live in right and then on top we're going to do the lighter color so on top we're going to have kind of some lighter colors and to make it look like there's kind of cabins we can do some like um angled some of these are gonna have more you know more things in them than others uh, like i think this one has got a got some windows so i'm going to do line 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 and across and that's it you know, just like a little indication of something in the boat. 
There's a little something there, a little something there. This one's got a person standing in it, I think. Maybe, or maybe it's that one back there. I, I can't tell. But this one's got a more white-ish boat, so I'm gonna get the white color. Do that. Again, kind of a V-shape comes up a little bit right there on this one, it's closer to us. We're seeing a little bit of it wrap around into the water. I'm gonna wipe this off because I got a lot of gray in my brush. Get a little bit more of that bright white for right here. Just like that. Leave this side dark. And then a little bit of light along the top right there. And then the cabin on this one is dark. So the cabin on that one was white. This one's darker. So I'm going to do, again, kind of a couple lines this way. Get the darker color. If I can get some to stick. And do an angle here, down. And like that. And then I can get my darkest black here and just do line here. Here, just a little contrast. Remember, I said we're going to have more contrast when we come closer to us. So, right in here, these ones closer to us, we can have the darkest dark and the lightest light. These ones are going to be a little bit less defined back here. Uh, let's see, this one's kind of the inside of the boat there and a little bit in the water. And I can't tell, some of this is going to be reflections, so I'm going to kind of do some of these reflections here. This reflection is going to have a lot of the white, so I'm going to put some white in the water right there. This boat here is kind of disappearing against this, which is fine. I'm going to make sure that this is dark. This canal line, though, is dark right here. So between the boats here and here, make sure that you've got that dark. Come on, it's not one to, I've got so much paint in my brush right now, it's not one to stick. There we go. So just kind of darkening up right around there. And this is actually, I don't know why I did it that way in the water. This is kind of coming in like this. So this boat's got a V, whoop, this boat's got a V right here in the middle, right there, kind of poking up and out, and then you're seeing the V down here in the water too. So it's coming up that way, and then it's down here in the water, There's it kind of mimics it. <coughs> and you're really not seeing a whole lot in the separation, um, I'm going to put a little bit of darker black right there where the bottom of that boat is just show in on all these just gonna show where that bottom line of the boats are and keep it keep it super super soft and random okay let's do this boat here this one's closer to us so the ones that are closer to us, we're going to want to, you know, kind of give a little bit more attention to detail. But we're going to still keep it pretty loose. These are, it's going to, it's kind of an impressionist type type style. So we're, it is an impressionist type style, not kind of. It is an impressionist type style. So that means we're just indicating the shapes. We're not trying to paint them in perfectly. Now, is it going to be as loose as a caboose? Close. Okay. Where'd you get that from? You don't remember? No. What? It was just last night. What was it? It was a show we watched. I don't, I don't Just stay loose. I am loose. Are you loose? Um, this. What, what show was it? It was that new comedy <sighs> skit. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. With the wedding party. 
Oh yes, yes. The mother of the bride. Yes, 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 yes. Thank you. I just, it just, you know, it loses all impact when you have to. When go you to, have to explain the whole thing. Well, too. that much explanation. <laughs> <laughs> well, they don't know what you're talking about either, so nobody. Yeah, well, okay, dark was, right here. Was that was name, a fun show. What was the name of the show? What was it? Um. I knew that I was going to forget it, too. I knew it was going to be. It was an improv show with yeah. two guys. Made up names. Yeah, I can't remember their names. Was it Schwartz? Was one of them Schwartz? Maybe. I can't, I can't remember. Like Phineas or Finney or something. I don't know. <sighs> it's on Netflix. I don't know. Look it up. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's new. It just came out. It's an improv with two guys. Which Somebody maybe in the audience knows. We looked for because the guy from Manchester, Manchester Orchestra, Orchestra yeah. was watching it. Yeah. I know. Okay, so there we go. Uh, I'm not 100% on that boat, but that's it's close enough. Um, and this actually kind of starts to curve up a little bit right here because uh, it's getting closer to us. We're starting to see this. It actually doesn't. It's not a straight line right in here. It's kind of starting to curve up. Right there, I'm going to bring this up just a little bit, right there. And there we go. Isn't that fun? Okay. So, um, let's do this side. This does have a lot more detail than I intended, but it always does, right? It always, it doesn't matter what I start to try to paint, it's always going to. I can find a way to complicate it. So we're gonna paint a plain white circle. And it's gonna take me three hours. Three to do hours it. later. <laughs> it's gonna be so easy. And then it's like, no, it's not. Be a real painterly impressionistic like <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I can pull it off, sometimes not. I don't know. I, I think we're doing okay. Though we're we're only we're in an hour in, so we've got uh, most of this bottom section done. And we'll just This boat's white, so I'm gonna get. I'm gonna do kind of some dark first, and then I'm gonna go back in with some lighter color. That way, I'll have a little bit of contrast underneath the boat. And get the dark gray for the waterline up and around. It's dark on this side. The windows are dark, so I'm gonna just poke lines down for those windows. So you were right about Schwartz. Okay. It's Middle Ditch and Schwartz. Middle Ditch. Okay. I would never in a million years have remembered Middle Ditch. <laughs> I did not remember that. Middle Ditch and Schwartz. It might be their real names. I don't know. I don't think so because that one guy so. was from a, uh, what was that show? <sighs> oh, I know what you're talking about. Uh -huh. Um, um, Parks and Rec. Parks and Rec, yeah. Yeah, Yeah, he was funny. He, he played was, the brother of that. He was, played the annoying brother. Or no, the bre best friend. The annoying best friend. Yeah. The weird best friend of the... Yeah, he had all these great business ideas. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He did the, yeah. He did the startup with the, with the basketball, like, gym inside the building, and they, like, blew through all of their capital on just dumb stuff. They didn't have any business. They hired professional. They, they hired athletes. professional models and uh, yeah, and athletes. Yeah, that was funny. If you haven't ever seen Parks and Rec, that's one of the best shows out there to binge right now. I would highly recommend binging it. We, I'm sad that we've already blown through the whole season. <laughs> All of it. I was really sad when that ended. <laughs> Okay, and we watched, we binged it all at once. We like we'd never watched it at all while it was on air, but we we binged it last year, and man, we had so much fun doing it. All right, uh, white here. So I'm gonna go back to this boat now and just do white on the top of it and through between 
these posts that I just put and just little using the very tip of the brush and just kind of barely like drawing little details there but trying not to get super super you know into it I don't want to overdo it okay then get the kind of one of the medium to light colors here I'm just going to kind of brush over this darker medium gray that I did and put in that tarp right there on this building or this boat and then there's some light some little ropes and things that are causing you know things that happen around it too just little little things as long as we're getting the if you, as long as your line drawing is right you're you really we're main, mainly looking at the values you, we don't have any color that we're having to work with here so that's kind of taking out that whole part of the equation which is nice so all we have to really focus on is the values. So the, these kind of paintings are really great for um, if you struggle giving your paintings depth because this is just a, a really easy, um, not easy necessarily, super easy, but really good way of kind of focusing just on the values. Just that's all you can do here. So I'm going to get that darker color and just streak through some darker around there and you know, depending on what you've got on yours you just kind of have to look and see uh, but we're not I'm not trying to define these you know really carefully because I don't want them to have a whole lot of detail all right now we'll do uh, let's do the buildings the, the boats the the cars are kind of on top, so we'll do them last, and we'll work on the buildings now. And then we all, we're always kind of working from back to front. So, you know, with the canal, we kind of did the water, and then everything that's on top of the water, you know, then the then the sides here, and then the boats that were in front of it, um, and working towards the front boats here. So we're going to do the tulips very last. Um, so we'll start on our buildings back here, and we'll just work towards the front and then we'll put in our cars last so that's how I'm deciding the the order of things here uh, and this brush seems to be doing okay for me so I might just I'm gonna stick with it and see how it goes here so I'm gonna start with kind of some of the lighter ish colors here and I'm just gonna put in some of the vertical sections here that I'm seeing where I'm seeing light so I'm just looking at my reference photo and I'm seeing where do where do I see light colors happening and so I'm gonna and it doesn't have to be all of the light areas because I'm not trying to do the windows but I'm looking at the main building sections where I'm seeing light and let me add the kind of medium medium color here and get some of that in and literally this is what I'm gonna do I'm just going to use my brush and just like we did with the boats kind of almost I'm going to just do these like streaks of color coming down and then I'm going to go back in and whoop, come on do little dots and dabs for like little indications of doors and windows and things but that's all I'm going to do I'm not going to try to define anything and then I'm going to go ahead I'm going to go ahead and work on the, the cars too while I'm at it I'm just going to kind of do all of it coming towards us so uh, these are too dark but they're down here there's things happening down here so just little dabs and just try to make sure that I'm getting my line keeping my line straight so every now and then I'm going to go in here with a really dark color and just add a little bit of darkness to define some areas maybe some doorways or windows or something right. you want some chocolate? sure I'm going to be able to talk if I'm eating chocolate though might not be able to paint after you have some oh that's the bourbon oh yeah 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 um 
Where's the card? I don't know. Um, it it's it's by it's on top of my um uh the hutch straight ahead. Grab that whole stack of cards there. We've gotten some correspondence yesterday. We got some bourbon balls in the mail. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? And they're very strong. They're yummy. How many gone? Huh? How many gone? How many gone? <laughs> I don't know which card it is. Did you bring all? Oh, that's that one. I'm trying to give it to you. Oh, okay. <laughs> From Christy Kinson. Thank you, Christy. She sent us a sweet card. It's a big, long note in it. I love it. Love it. And then I also got um, a hand-painted card from Jessica McKenzie. Isn't that beautiful? With a really sweet note. And this one was from uh, Addie. She didn't give a return address, so thank you, Addie. Hope you're watching. Um, and then I got a, a check in the mail from Mary. Thank you, Mary. <laughs> 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 and uh, Monica Tarvin sent me a sweet card, too. She was one of my patrons, longtime patrons. So, beautiful card and a sweet note. So, thank you, Monica. Thank you to everybody who sends us cards. We read them all. We, I have them set up in my house there, like up on my hutch right now. And um, I've been really bad about replying. So, I'm sorry. I have not replied to anybody since, like, Christmas. It's been one of those, one of those years. <laughs> Phew. Okay. Um... I'm going to just so, no, I'm not going to have one of those right now. <laughs> They're super strong. Okay, I'll eat one for you. Okay, good idea. I'm getting the kind of lighter, lighter color here. I'm going to do this building here. Looks like it's lighter. I don't know. I can't tell. Uh, this would drive me crazy if I had to try to like do this in like really carefully. I don't I don't think this would be one that I would try to tackle. Way too many details. So again, just making sure that I'm getting my angles right on my faces of my buildings here and There's a little dilly sticking up from the top roof. I don't know what this is, but it's been sticking way up there. There's some stuff sticking up there. I think this is, I'm on the wrong building here. This one's the one that's got the dark windows. are going to start kind of darkening up some of the contrast, bumping up the contrast between the, on the buildings themselves and down here in the street too.
Okay, and then just grab in a different different value color here. I think I'm going to switch to my smaller round here for some of these. Let's see if this works for filling in some of this. So where would we put this paint in the difficulty level? Um, I really think if you just kind of keep it loose like this, it's not that difficult. It really isn't. It's but it it can be difficult if you um, if you have trouble kind of keeping track of you know where you're at and stuff. But I think that if you as long as you kind of keep this this sort of style, you could do a similar thing like what we did in the water up here on these buildings so like i've done that before with the paris one where we kind of just did like scraped it on um some of the far buildings we just scraped um so you could do that with these ones here too you could just scrape it on like a palette knife painting and just get you know some different in, different values in there and call it good so you can simplify it you know pretty easily if you want to um it's just, it's up to you how much detail you put into it, you know. But I really don't, um, I don't know, it's hard to say. It's hard to say. I know the other two were beginner ones. The London one and the, and the um, Paris one were both for beginners. And they, they um, I think they were definitely doable for the people, you know, that did them. I think uh, had pretty good success at it, so... As long as you keep these angles right, maybe check your angles every now and then, just making sure that these are all lining up. You know, that's probably going to be the hardest part. And you could get rid of all these cars too. You could even get rid of the boats if you wanted to. Um, you know, there's lots of ways to simplify things. Okay, getting a lighter color here, and just going to scrape in some lighter color. Cross. There's this part of the building facing us here, a little bit of it poking out right here. And then there's another two buildings right here and here, kind of in front. With darker. Keeping this very loose, so I think if you do that too, it it, it helps because then you just you don't have to have it perfect. And as long as the majority of your lines are, are straight, it'll be okay. If a few of them are crooked, you know. So I think that's kind of my philosophy with this kind of painting is to try just to try not to try to kind of let let loose a little bit. It can be difficult, especially if you're like me and you like to have everything just so. Um, these kind of paintings can be a little bit trickier for me to kind of loosen up. But I think they're really good for you to um, to do that every now and then, you know, to just kind of go, okay, this does not have to be straight, does not have to be perfect. Um, last weekend we did our street scene, and we this one was more realistic you know so we took our time and we but even still i did i did you know fudge it a little bit the lines are soft the blends are a little bit soft um so even with something like this where we're going realistic you know we can still kind of keep it uh, a little bit more kind of impressionist and, and soft um so this one's kind of definitely more in the ultra realism you know like closer to realism than this one's going to be this one we're not trying to do this with it um we're not kind of trying to make sure all of our lines are super straight like back in here that we did on that one um this is our bonus video for um the month of may of april too um for patreon so that was the five dollar level bonus video we took six hours to paint it on sunday and it was a lot of fun i enjoyed it All right, so we're an hour and in, and uh, we made pretty good progress. I think this will be maybe two hours. I think I think we're gonna easily easily um, be 
within a couple hours here. Uh, let's see, okay, so this, build, this one is kind of straight here. I'm just looking at my lines that I drew. Gonna go ahead and kind of do some lines here. They're streaking. You can see how it's like skipping a little bit, so those kind of indicate almost like windows and things. Oh, was I off camera just, that whole time? Just barely. just barely is the same as yes. The answer is yes. <laughs> just barely is yes. It doesn't sound as bad though when I say it. switch to the smaller brush here and I'm going to get my lighter colors. And I'm going to start to kind of define some of these a little bit more. Maybe put in some of some of these. They're coming down and do some lights on the inside of the windows. So I've got the dark lines and I'm just kind of going in between here and doing the lighter. sticking up right there. Oop, I am way off camera, honey. I just I was reading the chat, I'm sorry. here I'm seeing some awnings coming down again don't have to be particularly fussy about it I'm trying to keep from getting too fussy but I'm wanting to just straighten up my lines just a little bit so you know kind of finding these buildings and making sure that they make sense a little bit. This building here has got a lot of light. It's kind of lighter. 
This one has some details in there. There's some building, some lines like that. Okay, I think we're good. I think we're good. This one, we're gonna have like little window sills that are lit up. <coughs> Sorry, I got a weird cough there. So every time I cough, I'm like, what is that? Is it? Okay, so just like that, little, little, little. trying to define every little thing. All right, so this one's here. I'm gonna do this. L shapes right there. Already got the dark in there. Just kind of highlighting the inside of them a little bit. These ones, this one here has got quite a lot of let me go ahead and do some of what is going on at this one. This one's got kind of a cornice coming out like that. This building over here has got a little highlight along here that goes and runs here. This is the corner of it. And there's the angle of the roof right there. And then this one comes in front. This one's got a little bit of the roof line showing right here. And then it's got some line like that. And then Okay, just little, little lines indicating stuff happening. Uh, and this one we're getting closer to, closer to us, but I'm still going to keep it fairly loose. I don't want to get caught up in all this detail, so I'm going to just keep it kind of loose still. Already got some color there with the and then the front side here will have some doorways things happening. It's just amazing how your eye fills in the it's just like with flowers, you know, where you kinda do dots in the in the background and you know, if you've got trees and a sky and fields you know green layers of green and then you end up doing like little dots your eyes gonna go oh that's flowers you know like if they're colored so the same thing with this it's like your eyes kind of already we've got this kind of city scene uh set up we've got these buildings uh with the perspective and your line your you know all these little uh, your eyes are just gonna kind of fill in the details for you, you don't have to define it everything you know as long as you kind of get the basic shapes right your eye is or your you know your brain is going to interpret it as a building I don't know it's kind of neat how that works but so we don't have to kill ourselves doing all these you know that's the fun thing about this kind of painting is we can kind of 
fudge it a little bit. And as long as we've got these kind of lines going in the right direction, perspectively, and you know, um, and uh, all it, it's gonna it's gonna all seem like okay. That's a that's a car. That's a you know house. Whatever. It's pretty fun. What works? What size brush are you using right now? This is the number two one zero round. I'm going to throw in these tires and do some semicircles because they're kind of cut off by the by the pier there, not perfectly circled. Okay. I'm just going to kind of do dark right here in the foreground. Right there. And then I, th I think I want to switch back to my angle brush because it can get lines and be easier to kind of get these boxy shapes in, I think. So I'm just going to kind of tap in and draw in my little car shapes. Leave a little bit of space, maybe get a little bit of the lighter color and do some highlights on them. in with the dark black hair and just add some windows in. That's what will make them look like cars. Just those little kind of windows. This one in front, a little bit lighter than the rest. Do that one in. And get that dark color. Do your window window. Make sure the tire kind of makes sense. Was I off again? So just going back in there here, making sure I have a dark. That's all I'm, I'm not gonna define these at all. So I need just need to get going on this side too. I'm gonna, gonna do the same thing, just kinda little 
things. These ones are facing us. So these ones are kind of to the side of us. These ones are facing us. So there's a little bit different perspective. We're not seeing the tires as much. I'm going to go ahead and find these lines a little bit better. And this side's got trees too. This side doesn't. I guess the trees all died on this side. They weren't getting light. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> that would be my guess. some of the lighter color here and just kind of going back over and adding some of that. And then getting kind of my middle value color. So I kind of started with the dark and I added some light and then I'm just getting the middle value here and I'm just going to add little lines and things for windows. Doors. Line things. So really I'm not going to do a whole lot with these back here. Maybe a little bit more white in a few of them. on the cars. Okay. Get some little bit of the lighter color and just put a little seeing these trees all in through here so I'm gonna tap in these trees like that That's the top of what I'm doing here that getting bigger just like that they're gonna follow the same perspective if they're the same size tree which we're assuming they are looks like they are from the photo. Get a little bit of darker color, adding it in. Back there. How you doing, hon? Mm -hmm. Everything okay? Mm -hmm. Today's our game night with our kids, so we're going to get to play games with them. I'm just going to zoom. Be fun. Yeah. Oh, okay.
little windshields, little mini cars. Make sure I have a good kind of light line here leading to my bridge. Did I put easy in the title of this one? No. Good. <laughs> I think I I think I suspected it might not be super super easy as I was hoping. It's it's easy enough to you know, but it's not it's not fast easy, you know. It's mm -hmm. not like do it with your kids easy. <laughs> Unless you did it with palette knife and just scraped. You could do that, that pretty easily. Okay. This is all light colored up here. brush pretty thick here so that I'm getting good kind of amount of paint being deposited. Some of these windshields that I'm seeing. Tires are going to be kind of these like, like flattened circles here and here, like here, here. little circles for our bicycles. There's like a little bicycle rack in here. Okay, getting some lighter color now. Got the medium, got the dark, and I'm gonna get the letter here. And I'm just gonna try to define some of these a little bit better using the tip of my brush.
here, there's some. Oh wait. I can't tell where anything is anymore. Darker color. Okay, there we go. Just again filling in these kind of random shapes I'm seeing. Keep them very... All of these lines should be straight up and down, these ones. All of these. But the tops of them and bottoms of them are being angled. Every now and then, I'm gonna kind of do like that and just make sure that I'm getting my window shapes right. Get those angles right. How are you doing, hon? I'm doing good. Can you believe it's only eight months till Christmas? No. Yeah. I'm concerned if we don't get over this COVID crisis. What? Well, with Santa, I don't, you know, I don't know if he'll be on lockdown or <laughs> social distancing and all that stuff. Yeah, he might have the elves do his deliveries. Do that awkward exchange like I had with the UPS guy a couple weeks ago. <laughs> I'm just going to set this down and move it, walk away. Exactly. <laughs> Slowly. Just hostage exchange of packages. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he rings the doorbell and runs. She always kind of did that anyways, but still it's funny. a smaller brush for this, but being lazy. Okay. Let's 
one's a little bit darker than I'm making it, so I'll go a little bit darker with this. I have no idea what building in my picture this is anymore. I think I think I know, but I can't tell. Yeah, I think it's this one. go straight. And this is kind of the side of this building here. Corner right there. And then these are in front. These little kind of dormer windows coming out in front. And then like cornice right here. Little chimneys and things along here too, so don't forget to do those. Some of these have things sticking out the front. Maybe light poles, I don't know what. Little parts sticking out the top. Do that along here too. And that darker color, there's one's got some like rounded windows happening. Don't know what that is. It's hard to tell. Oh, there's shutters. That's what it is. They go rounded. Things and then shutters. Get to keep the cat burglars out. If you want straighter lines, you can use a different brush. I'm finding this one's doing okay for me, so I'm just going to stick with it. If you were hoping for like a realistic version of this, I'm sorry to disappoint here, but... full 
impressionism here today. But this matches the style of the other ones if you watch the Paris and the London ones that we did with the black and white, they were very much this style. None of the buildings had any any depth or or not depth but any, you know, detail. So that's what we're going for here, trying to kind of match it up so they're kind of a a set in that same style. Kind of, hopefully. Okay, I think I'm gonna call that good on my buildings there. And let's plan on our tulips and we'll be done. And you could go back in and add in, add more. You know, I may want to add just a few like little very bright white highlights here and there. You know, once this is kind of more dried, but got like in here. Like Angela said, we're done with the buildings. We're moving on to the tulips. Mm. Oh, wait a minute. Shut no, we're up. not. <laughs> Psych. Psych. Well, I just realized I probably want to do this while I'm thinking about it. Just a few, like, brighter ones right there. Some stuff happening in the windows, little cross pieces, when whatever. There's little bicycles here, so I'm gonna do a little. Oh yeah, and then the little trees. So, yeah. so let's do that. Let me add just a little bit of some random lines here. Yeah, and then we'll keep in mind, you know, that they're gonna get bigger as they come up closer to us and just do a little, tap in a little bit here, keep them above the cars, obviously. brush. Hopefully my red is still decent. Oh, it looks alright. So I'm going to kind of mix the cadmium red medium and the cadmium red light and find my tulips here and start kind of putting in my shapes. Now I'm going to need a darker red so I'm going to use some of my gray here that I mixed before. to make a deeper red. If you have a red that's like a crimson, you could use that. So a cad cadmium red deep or something like that, you could use that. This, these colors are not, are kind of muted too, so though, so I'm not worried too much about them not being bright enough because the colors in the tulips that were in front here are a little bit muted, so grayed out. So I'm 
just going to kind of define some of these petals with this darker color and then grab the lighter color and fill in around. Just looking at my tulips and seeing where I'm seeing the where I'm seeing the different colors happening. I'm going fairly thick with this paint. So we'll go, we'll do our medium and dark colors first and then we'll go back in and do our lighter colors at the very end. So you can kind of leave that for later. for this one in front here. So remember our light's coming from light's coming from over here. So these ones that are kind of folded back are gonna have the darker part right here. I'm gonna add even more black to that red. Get some even darker areas and if we want it to go a little bit more violet we can add a little bit of blue to it, which will warm it up or, you know, cool it off a little bit and make it a little bit more of a prettier dark red. It's probably too dark, but it's a little more in the middle. Just look at your picture and see where you're seeing that dark red. And just dab it in there the tip of your brush and go right over that wet paint as long as it's not dry drying I should say kind of coming off the side there. Okay. These two are overlapping this boat here. Get some of the darker color back here. Come on. These are obviously photoshopped in, so <laughs> it's not, they're not, uh, be 100% accurate, it's fine. You could change the color if you wanted to. It's your painting. Somebody was, <laughs> somebody left me a funniest comment the other day. They were, she was like, that last flower blossom that you added was not in the photograph and I was like really well that's a nice thing about being an artist is you can add more flowers if you want to like it doesn't have to be exactly the way the photograph shows it's okay to branch out a little bit so feel free 
you have permission. It is your painting. Nobody mm. gets to tell you what to do with it. That's ridiculous. I know. What is the world coming to? That is ridiculous. If we start letting artists do what they want, then there's no gonna, there's going to be chaos. Yes. In this world. If you start adding flowers where there are no flowers in your pictures, then where does it stop? You know? that, That's what I'm asking. That is what led to people wearing shoes without socks. <laughs> you think the artist started that? Of course. You're pretty sure. And it's it, just like, it first it's an extra been. flower here, an extra flower there, then all of a sudden you're not you wearing socks. I don't think I need socks today. And, you know. And then you may be wearing beads. Who well, knows? We can, We cannot have that. That was the best comment ever. It's like, really? <laughs> Why do you think God made socks <laughs> if they weren't supposed to be on your feet before <laughs> your shoes? I don't know, honey. Some people just really get to me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. I don't mean to make fun of people. I promise. I just love comments like that. It just oh. tickle, tickles me. <laughs> I do some some people. <laughs> Mark likes to come and make yeah. fun. Yeah, he yeah. does. Mark's, Mark's meaner than I am. But I know people make fun of me, so it's true. It's a fair turnaround, fair play. And they want to off me, so huh? And they want to off. They want to off you. Yeah. Do do it with your co-host. Exactly. Oh gosh, that's still probably one of my favorite comments we've ever gotten. All right, so I'm going to make a green here, mix in that ultramarine blue with uh, yellow. Makes this really pretty kind of olive green. And if I want it darker, I'm just going to add more blue. So I'll have a darker version over here. It's got more blue. I can even add a little bit of brown if it's still too light. It's going to be fairly close. I might add a little bit of burnt umber. Here we go, nice olive dark green, and then kind of a lighter green, and then if we want it even lighter, we can add a little bit more yellow over here to have a brighter green. That might be too bright, but we'll see. So while that red's drying, we're gonna go ahead and use the, I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna use the kind of medium green to do my stems and I'm just using this 3 8 inch angle brush here and right up, up underneath the flower, it's a little bit darker, so I'm just going to go back in with the darker green right up underneath there and add a little bit. That was probably too thick. Let me go ahead and wipe that off. They're pretty thin. It's pretty thin. It doesn't thicken out a whole lot right at the top. Just the tiniest bit. So don't. Don't do it too much. Okay, so, so I'm gonna go ahead and put the stems in, even though we're gonna paint the, the leaves over the top of them. That one's going to this one. Okay, really fun. I love this effect of the really close-up foreground um, objects. It really pushes the perspective. Back. So I'm gonna just take the leaf, this brush, and it it's perfect for doing leaves like this. It just makes it super easy because all you have to do is kind of just run that tip, and the brush kind of makes the shape for you. Uh, I might even add. I can see like a little bit of purple lines in these leaves too, so I might just add a little bit of red through them too. Okay. Red is a great color to use to darken up green too because it's opposite on the color wheel so it makes really pretty combos. And I may use the darker color. I'm gonna use the, grab some blue. I'm gonna use that blue and red. Of course, cadmium red is too orange for, to make a really good it's too close to, to a yellow 
red um, to make a good purple with any color. So you need a you need a magenta to make purple, but we can get a you know ish purplish color out of it. Well, you're getting close to the end here. I want to remind everybody about patreon.com slash Angela Fun Art. Mm -hmm. Traceables. Traceables Palooza. The $2 yes. level. Yes. And, then and there's there's now search. So if you've, if you've been a patron before and you didn't like, couldn't find anything, it makes it a whole lot easier now. They've changed their website. And so you, now you can search for the traceables. A whole lot easier to find things. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and get some white here and just make create some highlights with the white too. And then earlier in the video Angela showed the other street scene that we did last Saturday, the six hour yes. show. That yes. at the five dollar level yes. and then also gets you access to all the previous bonus videos for that too yes so uh, we've done all kinds every month we do a new bonus video so there's oh gosh i don't know how many we've done but there's been a several so um some of them were done on youtube uh unlisted so those links are you should if you go to youtube uh or go to the patreon you can um Search for bonus video, and there there's some posts that are public where you can see the bonus, the pre previous bonus videos. So you can check those out, and then if you decide you want to sign up, you can or not, whatever. But uh, yeah, we have fun with our patrons, and next month we're gonna play, we're gonna do a thank you patron party, quarantine party, and we're gonna be oh, playing nice. bingo, and we've got s several of our sponsors are gonna be given all kinds of prizes, so. It's gonna be really fun. We've got a case of a case of canvases that Fredericks is gonna give away, and then at the same time we're gonna do a public giveaway on Instagram and pay and YouTube, so you can watch for that. But we're gonna, one case is gonna go just a, a one lucky patron, and then Pin Princeton is giving away a bunch of stuff. They're giving away several sets of brushes. Um, and we've got mugs from Fredericks and stickers from Fredericks, which their stickers are really cute. I'll show you their sticker here. There are these ones here. Kiss my art. <laughs> it's so cute. Um, so I think I'm going to decorate up my water bottle, actually. I was thinking about that I could put the stickers all up on my water thing nobody else can see them but me but it'll still be fun mm -hmm. um so anyhow yeah that'll be really fun we're going to play bingo for to win the prizes uh the one the one drawback about that is that it's going to be on a two thursday we had to do it on thursday we were going to do it on a sunday but it's church and all we we couldn't fig figure out another day that would work so we're it will be on a thursday afternoon but it's at 4 p.m., which is one of the better times, hopefully, for internationals. And we're going to run for about three hours, probably-ish. So it could be four, um, just until we run out of prizes. So um, I will, I will not be running for three hours. The game will be running oh, for okay. three hours, right. not you. <laughs> there's, there's no way. <laughs> no way. Uh, no. I wouldn't either. I'm not a man. We would both be. I'm glad there's no zombies with this apocalypse. That's all I'm thinking. Because mm -hmm. we'd be in trouble. If they if they have to, we have to start running. We we may be. We may become ones ourselves. Yeah. We may become part of the horde. I mean, I I know I'm faster than some people. So. <laughs> So I'll last a little while. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no. You're probably faster than me, that's for sure. 
Well, I'd wait for you. You'd wait for me? Yeah. Oh, thank you, Annie. Can they climb trees? Because I can, I can still climb a tree. Mm, I don't know about that. I don't think I have very much upper arm strength anymore. I tried to do a pull-up one time like a couple of years ago, and I almost pulled my arms out of my sockets. So <laughs> I don't think I could pull myself up a tree, probably. I don't know. <laughs> that's a, that's a, those are muscles that don't get used much as an adult unless you're deliberately doing it. Uh, I found real quick, found out. Yeah. <laughs> Not as agile. No, no, I don't think I could do any of the stuff that I did as a kid anymore. Well, that's why they allow us. I don't us. feel 50, though. That's why they allow us to have wine and stuff like that. <laughs> it's just you, so. You, you can't do a pull up, pull here. <laughs> Drown your sorrows. Here's a glass of wine. Oh, gosh. I mean, I, I, we can still lift that, so that's, that's okay. I swear Mark does not have a drinking problem, I promise <laughs> you. He talks about drinking so much. I had somebody ask about it once. They were concerned. That's true. It's like, no. That's true. No, I'm really, I'm fine. She's like, blink, you know, blink if you need <laughs> help. I'm like, no, it's okay. Yeah, there's there's no. <laughs> no, I, I do have a chocolate problem. <laughs> you have anything you, you do. I, I do yeah. too. We both do. We're enablers. We yeah. enable each other too much. We're eating the when healthy comes, chocolate. Yeah. Yeah, we're eating the dark chocolate now. And with almonds. Uh-huh. That's, that's yummy. That's our healthy yeah, for you. Yeah, right. It's protein. We're getting some protein in and and our veg ch- chocolate's a vegetable, right? It True. comes from beans. Uh-huh. Maybe it's a legume. It might be. I, I think know. it's a legume. Chocolate's a legume. Cocoa, be- cocoa beans. Mm-hmm. Is it beans? I don't know. I'm going to say it is. And grapes are fruit, so. We're good. We're good. We got most of the food groups. Okay, so added, made that white here, just white with the red, cadmium red. And now we're going to just go through here and add, and I'm, it's this is a very light stroke. So I've got my brush loaded up fairly thick, but I do have a good straight edge on it. See how that is? And I'm going to set it right up against the edge, and I'm just very lightly touching it and pulling. And that's a very light brush stroke. And this way I can get these kind of streaks in my flowers and define the highlight areas of the petals. And then I'm gonna get the darker red here and just have kind of a, the darker red and I'm just gonna kind of brush through kind of underneath that to sort of blend it in a little bit over that yellow that I added at the bottom there. I don't think I even talked about that. I can't remember what we we're talking about, but I didn't mention what color I was using there. I used the cadmium yellow there with the at the bottom and kind of just pulled up the same way. Loaded it fairly thick and then just quickly kind of pulled up. With it. I'm going to go in with the bright red here and just kind of fill in the middle sections here. Wherever I feel like it needs a little bit more color. See that? If we do the the highlights over the wet red, it'll blend it in even better. We might want to do that first. Do a little bit of that darker red first. See if that helps. Blend it in. Okay, so let's try it here. We're going to do a little bit of the darker red on those areas. And then I'm going to get this lighter color 
I'm going to blend over the top of those and it'll blend in with that red a little bit better because that red's just don't do too many don't do too many petals though so if you're kind of slower to blend you know maybe do one or two petals and then add more red and then another few petals and add more red it really works either way so I can do it this one I haven't put the red down yet it's working fine and then get the red and you can have the red on a different brush if you if your brush has too much of the white color on it but this petal is kind of folded down right here so we're seeing this little light area facing us in front you can add it behind so the main thing is just to get your light and darks light lights light darks 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 dark with the red a little bit. We've already got the yellow there, but this will be a good like color we can add. the glazing medium really at all so you probably don't need to put that out too late now hopefully not but if you're painting along sorry I didn't use it mm. kind of made my paint watery there to do this you kind of don't you kind of need your paint a little bit thicker but not too thick it's kind of kind of a fine line but it doesn't it doesn't do the streaky thing. You can see how it's just kind of pushing it around. It's not streaking for me right now. Crack yourself up. I just thought you were going to say a joke about streaking. So I know you were thinking it. So you laughed? Like, <laughs> yes, I laughed at your joke that you hadn't said yet. Say, no, I'm not. You're not going to say anything? Okay. No, I'm not streaking for you. Okay, well, Spencer's still not here, so... Well, that's true. There's no kids <laughs> in the house, so... It's probably safe. <laughs> I'm sorry, everybody. You might have that image in your... <laughs> mm. Counseling. <laughs> Counseling is available. <laughs> I did pop into your unexpected show the other day, just in my mm -hmm. white t-shirt. <laughs> yeah, Mark walked through. He got his, at least it wasn't a wife beater. That's true. That's true. Well, but it did have stains on the armpits pretty bad. Really? Yeah, you you have like this whole stain up on your arm. <laughs> Speaking of arm stains, oh my gosh, yesterday. Oh, that, that was a, that, that's like ink or something like that. Yeah. It was something. I don't know. He had, he had like lines all in the shirt. But yeah. Yeah. So yesterday I was making my color chart. So I got to the very last color that I did was a burnt sienna here. I did all my yellows and reds and everything. I'm almost halfway through it. And by the way, you can get this by signing up to my newsletter. So if you go to my website. Oh, you know what? I don't think I have that link. But it's I'm trying to think of where in. it is. Ooh, where is that posted? 
Oh, did he post it on? It's uh, in the newsletter. It's in the Facebook group. It's in my newsletter, but they won't get the newsletter that's got it in there until next week. We'll probably post it again next week. Um, I will put the link to get this down in the description of this video. It's not there now, but it will be in just a couple minutes here after I finish. Um, but uh, it's blank. So people were like, I'm printing it out. It doesn't have a color. So I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I didn't make that clear. <laughs> it's blank. <laughs> so it's got all the colored names that I put on here, but it'll also have an Excel file. So you can change the color. You can use the Excel file um, if you know how to run it and change the color names to suit whatever you've got at your house. Or you can just print it out blank and write in your name. So there's three different files. There's one with my colors on it. Um, that's two sheets. And then there's one that's... Um, that's the Excel file, and then there's another one that's just a blank sheet um, that you can write in yours. Um, but that none of them have colors in them. I will be posting the finished color chart um, later, and it'll go out in my newsletter once I get it finished. But um, they're they're probably not going to print out exactly right. Printers, monitors are all going to be a little bit skewed. You know, it depends on kind of your color balance and everything. So it's much better if you just do it yourself and just fill in the colors that you have because then you'll know what, how to, you know, how your colors relate to one another. Um, and I'm doing it by, you know, like uh, cooler, green, cooler yellows up here, cooler, warmer, 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 getting warmer, all the warmer and then into oranges and I put in my warm browns in here and or my orangey toned and red toned browns and then into the light orangey reds orangey reds and then into the crimson reds and then into your magentas and then we're going to go into the violets and blues and then greens so I'm kind of putting it in the order of the rainbow sort of and you know so that you know that this red is going to be warmer it's closer to your oranges than this one down here that's going to be closer to your purple colors um, and then that'll hopefully help you too when you're um, when you're choosing your colors and knowing how to kind of mix them together but um, long story I was doing my burnt sienna and I took the cap off and um, the cap went I mean it was like the perfect my my sleeve must have been just like this and I took the cap off and it dropped right down in my sleeve and I had my arm up and I was looking I was looking for the cap and I kept moving my arm around and and then all of a sudden I felt like it wore it like this wet and I'm like oh no and I mean it was one of my good shirts too I shouldn't have been using a good shirt but I was like I was painting literally painting out of the caps I wasn't even putting paint on the palette how do I get paint on my shirt when I do like I don't know I've never done that before I had paint all the way up above my elbow by the time I got that shirt off and it was all smeared all inside the sleeve Thankfully, on the inside of the sleeve, but oh my gosh, I, I, I was can't laughing believe quite I did that. Mark was like, "Don't take your shirt off in here. The the the, the window's open." open. <laughs> 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 As she's trying to get the cap out of her sleeve. Oh my gosh! Hey, real quick, people mm -hmm. wanted to know how did you print off that large sheet? I did not. It's two sheets, so it's two sheets, and I glued mm. them together, um, and I cut. I cut the the the, the tip of it. If when it prints, if you do uh, make sure if you're doing the Excel file, make sure that you're printing it at 95%, and make sure that you're fitting it to your to your printer page, and make sure that your more margins they should be as long as you don't mess with it. It should be set to print the way I did, I think. But um, make sure your margins are zero, and that way it'll print all the way to the very edge like this. And so I cut off the top of the second page. I cut off right to the right to the black line. And then I used my, it's right there. You can see the seam. Yeah, right there. So I, I used my, and there wasn't very much room. There was probably only an eighth of an inch maybe. But I used a really heavy duty um, uh, scrapbook paper glue that I have. I have a glue gun. And I just went along the very edge, the front edge of it, of this sheet that was going to be on top. Went along that edge, glued it down, and then taped the back so that. And I tr and I did not wrap my tape around. I made sure that the tape stayed on the very back. And it's it's together. I mean, like it's not going anywhere. It's right. really good. And it so it looks like one continuous sheet, but it's not. And that's a cardstock. It's cardstock. Yes, just regular old cardstock. 
Um, I tried to print it onto my, um, I have some acrylic paper. Um, I tried to print it on that. I, it, I couldn't get it to print my printer. It was too thick for my printer, so it wouldn't go through. Um, but if you have, like, they do have, Frederick's has, and I've ordered some, Frederick's has some some paper that's for copiers, that's canvas paper. So that probably would have worked, but I didn't have any in, in it with me, so I just used that. And it you, it worked before, too. I, that's what I used on my previous one. Um, the only bad thing about doing it on on that is that it the ink will run so um if you have like a um if you have a um oh, what am i trying to say fixative a uh, paper fixative you know for like if you're doing colored pencils or something um you could spray that onto the printout and then paint on it and it should hopefully keep it keep the ink from bleeding on from the, the printer ink from bleeding um, hopefully. So anyhow, okay, there we go. We're, uh, that's about all I'm going to do. I think I might do, well, let me see. I see that. I see a little bit right here. I was watching Lackery. She did her live show yesterday. She does Lisa Clo. Um, uh, actually I think it's Lacree. I think it was saying it wrong. Anyhow, um, she was doing her live stream yesterday and, um, what was I, why was I saying that? I can't, I can't remember why. I can't, I don't, I don't remember what I was going to say. I was, I got squirreled there. Sorry. Okay. You're talking about the paper fixer or something like that and bleeding through. And I don't know. I, I honestly, I can't, I can think I lost it. I lost it. It's gone. I'll probably remember it as soon as I quit. But so there you go. You can go watch her show and then try to guess what I what I was gonna try to tell you. But <laughs> click <finger. Click> <laughs> oh, I, do. I don't do that very often during the live shows. I do well, that. In she real does life watercolors, all the time. right? What? So she does watercolors. So was, was it about paint bleeding through or something? Or no, okay. I'm trying. I don't know. I used to have some color fixative is all I know, and I cannot find it in my studio. It's driving me crazy. I've looked everywhere. So, um, no, I, I, I honestly, I can't, I can't think at all what, what it was. I, I don't know. I don't remember. There was something that reminded me of her, of her show, but I don't remember what it is now. So I'm not going to even... It did take me too long to figure it out. Okay, so. Is that about grayscale? No. She did, people are saying she did a dandelion. Yeah, she did a dandelion, but uh, mm -mm -mm. I don't remember. Honestly, it's gone. It's completely gone. I don't, I don't remember what I was going to say, so. I need to, I need, I need to get my brain checked. Yay! Super chats for donations to yes the to CDC. CDC, yay! So we had two people donate today. Yay! The first person was Amanda. She donated to the CDC Foundation. Thank you very much, Amanda. And then we also had Barbara. And Barbara also donated thank to the foundation. Guys. So thank you very much for doing that. Yeah. We appreciate that. Very needed. Very needed right now. We just need to figure out what's going on with this virus. And there's so much misinformation and kinds of different opinions about what to do and not to do. And uh, hopefully if we can get the scientists behind it, we can figure out what's going on and get it, get back to normal or at least close to normal as we can as soon as we can. So thank you guys. That's awesome. I would rather just work from home forever. Well, that's what I'm thinking. The new norm is going to have to be work from home if you mm -hmm. can. I mean, not everybody can, unfortunately. So yeah. we're, we're fortunate that that's a possibility for both of us, but I'm an, I'm enjoying having you and Spencer home. It's been nice. I'm usually work by myself all the time. So <laughs> it's been nice having, I'm, I'm not an introvert like you are. Well, I was in here Mark's working. Probably. I was yeah. in here working yesterday and I was, you know, trying to hit on my coworker <laughs> and she was completely ignoring me. <laughs> completely oblivious. Well, uh, I was working on colors, so in my defense, um, paint. 
was mm-hmm. involved. It's pretty much right. well, that yeah. that trump that trumped um, mm-hmm. your romantic advances. Yeah, you. Were, I was like, that's how I feel when you're pay- playing your video games, <laughs> and I'm sitting there, kind of trying to hold your hand, and you're like. So turnabout's fair play uh, there. Wait a minute, how did that go again? Tick, tick, tick. <laughs> <laughs> All right, zoom out a little bit for this. We can see the whole thing, and uh, yeah, so you can play. Oh, it's fun. I, I think it turned out pretty cool. Ooh. Pretty cool. I mean, just you know, it's very, very, very r- rough, loose. You know, don't uh, don't expect too much from from it. But uh, I think if you kind of keep it loose like this, it's it's kind of a neat neat look. Kind of a fun challenge so i hope you try it and uh like subscribe yep like subscribe do all that good stuff we're gonna be uh we've got our may schedule out now so if you want to um check that out it's on instagram and pinterest patreon facebook all of those links are down in the description and if you're looking to buy the brushes that i'm using here they have them at thebrushguys.com i also have the link to blick blick has all of the brushes too um and the the prices are pretty similar so um either one but be sure if you use the brush guys um if you go to the Brush Guys website, use the link Angela or use the code Angela Fine Art in the um, checkout, and that way you get five percent off. And they give they they can record it. We get a little small um, referral. royalty yeah. referral fee from that. So if you don't use that code, we don't get any. Um, they don't know that it it came from us. So that helps us a little bit. And I'm gonna just, just clean keep up on this painting border. there. Well, I just noticed that this border was kind of messy right there so i'm just gonna clean it up a little and bit so she said down below the videos all the all the supplies the canvas size brush sizes yes. colors yes. social medias right all of amazon that. links bring this out a little bit buy stuff yeah support yeah if you, if you support you can support our channel um just by buying stuff by if you're getting art supplies and um blick if you use the blick link Blick has the Fredericks canvas. It, I would say um, before you do Amazon, I would try Blick because if if they ship to your area of the world, because um, Blick will um, have more of the all of the materials and they're a little bit cheaper than Amazon. So a lot of times Amazon are second parties and they may not be as as inexpensive as um, Blick would be. So I would try them first, and the link is down in the description now. For them, they're one of our new um, affiliates, so we're excited about that. And I used, I've used i used them for years, and I I highly recommend them. If you have any issues with your shipments, they make it right. Their customer service is excellent. So, um, And there's been a few times, like I had a gesso that exploded in my in my um, box. I opened it up and it was just like covered with everything. was covered with gesso once, and they replaced everything in the box. So, and some of it was still usable, but they, they're they really good about it. So, I was really pleased with them. I can definitely recommend them. So, all right. That's uh, getting long-winded. Yep. Uh, Tuesday, we're going to be painting the elephant. Is that right? Let me see. No, no, no. We're painting the, um, that's in May. We're painting the trees, the um, kind of magical trees. I think we're going to add some extra, like, lanterns. I think uh, it's, it's showing, like, fireflies, but I think I want to add, like, some string lanterns maybe in the tree, make it a little bit more special. Um, let me see. I don't have the picture. Uh, well, no, I don't know if it uh, does that. I don't want to mess it up. No. Uh, anyhow. But yeah, it'll be fun. You can you can check that out. If you click on my name or photo, it'll take you to our homepage. You can see the upcoming videos that way too. Dur. I'm <laughs> sending you other places. Just go just go here. YouTube. You can see at least the ones on YouTube now. We've got two that'll be for patrons only and those will be on my on my full schedule that's listed. But the ones those ones are not listed on YouTube, obviously, because they're gonna be on Crowdcast. So all right, that's it. All right. We're done. Thank you guys so much. Stay safe, and uh, we will see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.